G'day guys, and uh, we're all set up for a, uh, another night of uh, astro imaging with the Twin Rasses. I hope you've all had a uh, very Merry Christmas, and this will be probably the last video I upload um, for 2020. So I want to go ahead and wish you all a very, very happy new year. I know it's been a very challenging year for, uh, for everyone all over the world, and I hope that 2021 brings us a lot more good fortune. Well, on that note, uh, if you've seen my last um, uh, video where I shot my first mosaic, I'm going to be doing the same again, but I'm probably going to be, well, I'm going to be extending on to um, that previous uh, shot. Um, but there were a few issues uh, throughout the night in uh, imaging that. And one of them was that one uh, ASI air shut down um, well before all the other, uh, sorry, sorry, let me start again. One ASI air shut down, um, before it could finish the, uh, the imaging session. And I realized what that problem was. It wasn't to do with battery power or life or anything like that. Because I have one of my other asses running through the power of, um, sorry, one of my other ASI air pros running off of my other ASI air pro through the, um, external power support there. Once this ASI Air finished its um, imaging session, it was uh, ordered to basically shut down. So as soon as it shut down, it shut down the um, the other ASI Air that was still finishing its uh, imaging session. So hopefully we don't have that problem um, tonight. Now the last, um, uh, last image too, I shot some 10 second exposures as well, which I never ended up using um, in the stack. I thought maybe I might have um, overexposed um, Ether Carina a little bit, but it turns out I didn't with my 60 second exposures. So I'm gonna do straight off the bat 60 second exposures and I'm gonna let that just run um, all night. So more than likely there probably will be more um, images captured overall, but um, we'll see how that um, uh, joins with the uh, the other two images I've uh, captured already um, yeah there's uh, there's nothing really um, else to uh, talk about with this uh, setup here it's, it's just going fantastic and I can't wait to take it underneath some dark skies now and uh, astro image the focus motors they work fantastic too so um, everything as a whole is working great well I'm going to uh, wait for it just to get a little bit more darker now and then I'm going to start my polar alignment procedure and uh, and get ready to uh, shoot my next mosaic panel to then join onto the previous uh, mosaic panel and hopefully this will be the beginning of um, some big mosaics I plan to shoot in 2021. Alright guys, well, um, yeah, beautiful night, let's just wait for it to get a bit darker. So I'll speak to you a bit later.
All right, it's a bit darker now and I've uh, gone through my polar alignment and um, syncing processes and stuff like that. I've done things a little bit different this time. Instead I've used my little um, guide scope as my polar scope. So I disconnected the main scope um, camera and used the guide scope camera as the um, main scope to get that polar alignment because this scope here is in line with everything else with the mount. Um, and I wanted to see if that makes any sort of difference um, throughout the night's imaging session. I don't think it will make too much difference because I haven't had any um, dramas, but for peace of mind, I think I'd rather use the scope that's in line with the whole mount um, for the polar alignment process. Um, after that, I then had to switch back to um, the main uh, camera and then adjust the focal length again so it could plate solve properly. Um, so right now we're ready to uh, start imaging, but uh, Eta Karina is still a little bit too low. So um, I'm just going to wait a little bit longer for it to get a bit uh, a bit more darker and um, for Eta Karina to get a, a bit higher up. And then we'll, uh, we'll start my um, 60 second exposures and how many I capture throughout the night. It's undecided yet. So uh, yeah. Fingers crossed for a, a good imaging session tonight. Mm. 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 Well guys, I uh, thought I'd end this video a little bit differently to how I normally end uh, my videos. I, uh, I kind of slept in a fair bit this morning. So um, thankfully everything went well last night. I woke up to a uh, mount that was in its home position and, uh, and it took just over uh, 300, um, it was 312 frames for my, um, for RASA 1 and it was just over 300 frames for RASA 2. So I didn't lose too many frames there in, in the dithering process um, throughout the night. So really happy with that. Um, I also wanted to uh, talk about the actual um, mosaicing of the image because I was a bit excited to see how things would work out. I, um, 
I wanted to start to put an image together um, before I made the, the end of this video so I could let you know that if I came across any issues um, with the uh, the stitching in the image itself and I do so I'm not afraid to uh, to admit it but what it was is that one of the frames couldn't find enough stars to match sometimes with the mosaicing side of things so when I was creating the mosaic in PixInsight it would mosaic all four images together but then there would be um, you'd see uh, some of the steam uh, the seams so when I went to um, gradient merge that mosaic um, for some reason that fourth panel it couldn't quite find star matches for some reason I, I don't know why so I've left that fourth panel out and I'll show you an image with uh, all three panels and I'm really really excited about this image so amazing how well it's turned out under um, a uh, moonlit sky and light polluted um, bottle five skies um, the other thing I wanted to uh, um, talk about is I made a slight alteration to my uh, Rasa um, setup last night. Um, I'm sure anyone with a uh, ASI Air Pro knows about uh, these little um, USB uh, memory sticks. Well, because all my USB ports were pretty much taken up on my ASI Air Pro, I had to then go out there, unplug a port, plug this in, Get my phone out, connect it up, and transfer the uh, images. Um, while uh, images through that way, what I've recently done is I've actually used the um, and I can't quite show you. I don't think I'll try. So I've used. One of the USB ports on the front of my um, camera here for the electronic focus motor to connect up to, which freed up a port on my um, ASI Air Pro. And that enabled me to then plug this in and send images straight to my USB stick. So that worked really well. So if anyone has problems with their um, USB uh, on the ASI Air Pros, the four ports being full at back. Um, and you got an electronic uh, focus motor, connect it up to your uh, camera, works great. Also, the other thing I want to talk about too, because uh, I had someone mention it in the, uh, the last video I did, is this, this is a little wireless router that I, uh, I use now. Um, it's got a couple of uh, Ethernet ports in the back there, and it's only powered by a 5-volt uh, a USB um, device. So. I now use this here battery pack to um, power this throughout the night. And uh, and yeah, it worked great. Again, it freed up those ports on my um, ASI Air Pro because what I did is I, I plugged it, um, the power port, USB cable from here into the ASI, ASI Air Pro and that powered this. So I thought that was pretty cool, but like I said, I wanted to um, reduce the amount of uh, ports so I could use the USB sticks and yeah so this uh, here ran off my power pack um, and it, it works great and the fact that I can oh, and it extends the uh, the Wi-Fi range too um, because I don't know if any of these guys uh, have encountered Wi-Fi um, range issues with the ASI Air Pro so this here uh, extends it greatly and um, creates a much more stable uh, connection so it's a GL iNet uh, AR750. So GL AR750 is the, uh, the model number, and I bought it off Amazon. Um, and it was only, I think, about 60 bucks or something like that. So it's probably one of the cheapest, <laughs> but uh, very, very handy um, pieces I have with my, uh, with my setup. Um, and just lastly, I want to talk about the William Optics 32mm guide scope. Now, I know in the past I mentioned about um, uh, I had very bad tracking with the 50mm um, guide scope. That's why I went to the Celestron 80mm uh, uh, guide scope. But I wanted to try it again um, with my CGXL and knowing a little bit more about the ASI Air um, platform itself. 
So I went to the uh, 32 millimeter um, guide scope and it works fantastic. Um, even with the, uh, the ZWO ASI 290 Mini. Sorry about that, I was uh, interrupted by uh, Astro Ed here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this, uh, this latest video of mine. Um, if you have, give it a big uh, thumbs up. Settle down, Ed. And uh, leave a comment if you've got any questions. And if you, uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so and check out some of my other videos. All right, well, uh, I'm going to leave it, uh, leave it there because uh, Ed's getting a little bit uh, restless here and, uh, and call it. So, uh, yeah, until next time, guys, take it easy. See ya.